One of the more exciting things that's happening in machine learning is deep learning. You can see all of the uh, really amazing technologies from large language models to uh, doing, uh, for example, text to image generation with stable diffusion. And a lot of the Python programmers have been having a, a lot of fun with this. But one of the things that is interesting about Rust is that you can use PyTorch and you can use Hugging Face with Rust. And in fact, it can be 70 times at least faster. And if you do care about portability, performance, you know, packaging together, maybe a pre-trained model and then giving that to somebody, there is no other option in many ways than Rust because Rust can package all, all that together and you can use the amazing packaging tools like Cargo and also use Cargo to execute different iterations. So in a way, if you want a high performance research environment for deep learning, in my opinion, there is no better tool than Rust. And so what we're gonna do is go through step-by-step step how to actually use Stable Diffusion that has the PyTorch bindings uh, in Rust. It will also tap into a GPU and see how that GPU is used in GitHub code spaces. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a repo, uh, Laurent Mazzari, uh, and inside he has a Torch RS uh, package here. And what's amazing about it is how well it works to bind Rust with PyTorch, including doing GPU operations. I've been using it uh, quite a bit. And let's go ahead and look at the high level uh, overview. So it binds down to the C++ API. And if you take a look here, uh, all you need to do is set an environmental variable. In fact, this is the one that I set and it was able to actually just package it in for a GPU. There's some other tricks that you can do, but in a nutshell, uh, you can use PyTorch and uh, you can train models. You can use pre-trained models. I've got examples of this all running. Like I think this shows one of the really cool things you can do is use a pre-trained model. And then finally, if you want to, you could even do stable diffusion. So what we're going to do is just uh, briefly uh, take a look at this stable diffusion uh, example here where we can create images. I'm going to go to my repo, which is Nogi BJJ Rust PyTorch GPU template. And I'm going to go ahead and, and click this icon code. And this is again where Codespaces is so amazing is I've enabled GPU for this particular environment. And really the biggest takeaway here is that inside of this uh, setup here, uh, I have some uh, setup code here that allows me to do things like put that environmental variable for torch CUDA inside of my bash RC. And once I've done that, and I did a pip install of PyTorch, I was able to also get Rust working with stable diffusion. So all I need to do is go into that stable diffusion directory and we can look at it here. We can see um, diffusers RS. <clears throat> and if we take a look at this, a few different things I did was I downloaded the data for all of the weights. And that was one of the trickier things to do. And then I could just follow my notes. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Here's one of the things I can do. So I can make my own uh, invocation here uh, and in fact, what we can do is I can open up a uh, terminal to the side. And what I will do is do NVIDIA dash uh, NVIDIA SMI dash L1. And this just goes through and, and looks at how much GPU is being used, right? And you can see here it's zero right now. And now all I need to do is uh, go through here and run this command. And so I'm going to go through and do this. I'm going to say cargo run uh, example uh, stable diffusion. And then I'm going to put a prompt and say, you know, rusty, um, rusty code uh, in the ocean. Right. Let's go ahead and run that. And look what's going to happen. It's going to go through and it's going to, it's going to peg this GPU. Let's go ahead and take a look at it ac in action. And we'll see that this GPU will get saturated in just a second. And this is what's fun. There we go. CUDA is available. There we go. Here's the prompts. And in fact, if I wanted to, I could even throw this um, up here and we can see it side by side. So it's going to build the transformer. It's building the autoencoder. And so this again is why high performance code is so awesome is that I can go through here and, and build out you know, prototypes that use cutting edge libraries like Stable Diffusion that actually talk to a GPU. And here we go, 
we're going to see this thing is going to start hitting uh, the GPU and, and we'll be able to get a, uh, a nice overview. There we go. It's fully saturating that GPU. So we're able to, to use high performance tools like GPUs inside of PyTorch. You can see it's just cranking through and, and allowing us to build these images. And why is it able to do this? Because it's leveraging the PyTorch bindings and we can, again, uh, rapidly prototype different solutions. And if we go through here and we look at this, it's gonna have this uh, image right here. And if I just click it um, and I go to that repo, which is the uh, diffusers, and I look at that file that was just created, we should be able to take a look at it. There we go. There's our rusty um, code in the ocean. Uh, and and I, again, I can just continually crank out new different new, new different examples, right? I can just put a new thing inside of here and just say, you know, um, Python is so slow, but Rust is so fast. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We do it again. CUDA is available. It's going to crank through here and it's going to build out this example. Again, just allows us to quickly prank, crank on things. So even in, in many ways, if someone wasn't a Rust expert, they could do what I did, which is recreate uh, the uh, Stable Diffusers you know, link here and actually just build this as a prototyping tool to use Stable Diffusion. So I think there's even uh, extensive ways that someone might want to uh, leverage the Rust ecosystem, even if they don't want to become a Rust expert. Although I would personally say you should try to dive into using Rust. It's, I would say, just as straightforward as Python. All right, this is a, a preview of some of the things you can do with Rust and Stable Diffusion using the PyTorch bindings. I hope you give it a try.